Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Out Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. we got a big show lined up. But first, our weather by Haney Technical Center. It's only going to be a high of 88 and a low of 77. Not a lot of variance in that temperature right there on 11 degrees. So, big thing, you know, we just had this pattern in the last three or four or five days. We just had a stormy pattern. We still got a 50% chance of rain today. And it's just got to be careful getting outdoors. And we're going to talk about that more later. I'll take a look at our uh, river readings. Uh, I place cold at Bluntstown. It's, it's, they actually have, and I had to double check this, it's reading a 2.8 this morning. That's right, a 2.8. It just started dropping last week and just kept on dropping. And, it's, uh, and it looks like the rest of this week it's going to be less than three foot. Okay, the Choctahatchee at Carryville, it is going to have a big drop tomorrow on, on Wednesday, but now this morning it's 5.2. And it's going to be dropping down by Thursday. They're looking at uh, three foot by Thursday. So both river systems are really low. The water temperature has also dropped. It's down to 82 degrees. So what has happened? That stormy weather got a lot of things going on in the atmosphere and the water conditions. So so be aware of that. The uh, tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We are in some great tides right now. Really strong tides. We have a high tide at 8:22 this morning. And low tide at 7.30 tonight. We got over two foot movement going on. And our marine forecast is going west southwest at 10 to 20. And like I say, it's a 50% it's a chance of rain. But that, that wind is going to you know, keep everything stirred up in the bay and also the high tide. So you're going to be, if you like to uh, sight fish and, and fish in the flats, this is some really good weather and really good tidal conditions that you can do that on. Okay? All right, let's go and take our break and we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We'll get started on some of these pictures now. We've really had some interesting ones sent in the last couple of days. And, you know, but Sunday now, the weather really uh, kept a lot of folks in the dock. And it, it was just real stormy. And Saturday was blowing too. So, uh, but we still had some fishermen getting out there. This first picture, remember Travis Bassford with FWC was on the show last week. And he talked about catching some fish over there in the Yellow River. And he told me about this big, this, this bass he caught had a big old crawdad in it. And he said the whole crawdad, he obviously had just eaten it. When he caught it, so that fish was going through a feeding, a feeding uh, process of, you know, and they'll do that. They'll just like they go to a buffet and they just start eat, 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 and then they'll stop. And these are the feeding periods going. Here's a great testimonial of it. This one Travis caught uh, on, on a good string of fish, but I, I think, I mean, seriously, look at it. You could eat that too. Okay. All right now, uh, next one, uh, Bob, Bob Levon from uh, Levon's Lighting. Bob Billsma and his wife Levon. They sent lighting by Levon. One of my big sponsors, they do some serious fishing now. Here, they went out the other day to uh, had some friends down visiting with them. This is Eric Thacker. Uh, that, here's just a series of nice fish. And here's his mom, Marty. Okay. Uh, here's Eric again. Look at all the fish. He said they caught, they caught 90 fish in four days. And they really, uh, they really had some good, good fishing there. All right. All right, let's go down over to our western end of our viewing area. Victor Hathcote uh, sent this in. Victor, uh, here's his little email. He said, hey, Coach, uh, some friends and I went out on the Just Be Calls out of Destin and did really well. In addition to our snapper limit, we got two red grouper, several bee liners, and a black tip and a bull shark that we elected to release. I love the show, your brother in the gap, uh, Victor Hathcote. Vic, thank you. That looks like a, just a fun trip right there. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now listen, this has nothing to do with outdoors, but I was on the, on I-10. I didn't take this picture, but this is uh, this is I-10 over here by Tallahassee. When you see them stacked up like this, I just get a kick out of it because they, they look like they're ready to go. And what what you have here, you have this aerial, you have this plane up in the sky, of course. And uh, they, what he's doing now, he's going he's uh, uh, aerial surveying and these not just speeding drivers, but aggressive drivers and. Uh, He'll just radio down there, and they go one after another. And that's a whole fleet of them. I just got a kick, kick out of this picture, so uh, I knew y'all appreciate it. It's I-10 over here, close to Tallahassee. So that's not too far away. I was just uh, there recently. All right, let's get some catfish. Our buddies over there, Mariana, Jeff, and Mike, H and H catfishing. They got, a, they have some fine catfish. I got a series of pictures here they sent in. That's some healthy catfish. Okay, 
here they are. I love that cleaning table because what happens, you can clean them on, you have two people cleaning and keep that sink in the middle. And uh, that, that's, that's a good setup right there. That's Jeff and Mike from Mariana. Okay. Now, my buddy Carl Andrews on Father's Day, this is another group picture. He's fishing uh, well, Captain uh, on the Great Escape with Captain Stuart Miller, but he has his family. I thought this was a great Father's Day present. It, Carl Andrews, uh, his, his son, uh, Son, son was J.C., or is J.C., and, and the daughter Nancy and her husband Brad Tilgman, they, they watch the show, the wife Darlene and some of their friends. But i got a series of pictures. Here Darlene with a really nice, uh, nice uh, red snapper there. And here's Carl. Carl had a, he, he wanted to aggravate me and put an FSU uh, picture in it too. So I, I, when I first started coaching, uh, getting out of college, Carl was my fullback over at Rutherford High School. Well, we had a fine little football team, and uh, been in touch and got coaches, taught his son and daughter, and is just really uh, good people. Carl and Andrews, and what a, what a good trip right there too. He also went fishing uh, the other day. He went to cat fishing, and he had a he had a situation here. Uh, they were jug fishing up there uh, in, uh, they went to Lake Eufaula, but they got on the Georgia side of Lake Eufaula. Well, that's Ken Gilbert. Y'all remember Ken Gilbert? Uh, he stays at Howard Creek a lot. So, uh, let's see, I believe that's, well, I got, let's see, I got one, got one more picture, Jeff. Let me see. Yeah, I got, I got another, two more pictures right here. I got a, a Tuesday night shootout. This is little Tanner Page, son of Travis and Christy Page, at Tuesday night shootout on his first bass. He's eating a little basket, so he got to weigh it in. Good job, Tanner Page. And one more, now if you're throwing a cast net, you be careful here. This is a Carson Pope sent this in. This is a little baby cottonmouth. He was actually in the bay trying to get some, some uh, bait out there and then threw it. He got all kind of bait, but he got a little baby cottonmouth too. So be careful pulling that in, okay? Now, so that, that's some good, that's a variety of, of fish and, and different things going on right here in Panhandle. And I get, I was thinking of uh, driving, driving to work this morning, how, how blessed we are, uh, especially here in the summertime, at the variety of things we're going to be able to bring to you and talk about here on Panhandle Outdoors. So many things going on, and we're just, we're just scratching the surface. But with that being said, uh, June is wrapping up. We're in July 1st, uh, starting tomorrow. And, and uh, of course, July 4th has historically been sort of the halfway mark of the summer. So if you haven't gotten to do some of the things that you wanted to do for the summer, you need to go ahead and uh, and do like me, really start looking hard at and some, get some things done and all, because this July 4th is really sneak, sneaking up on me this year. All right, let's go ahead and take our break, and we'll be right back. Hi, right, welcome back. I was thinking, you know, as, as outdoorsmen, we just got to always be, be cognizant of the fact of uh, or these activities we do in the outdoors. We got it, there's a couple of things, and it, it's called ODM, that, w that we need to have ODM, and uh, I, this acronym I just made up uh, uh, last night when I was putting the show together. It's called Outdoor Decision Making, and ODM for short. Uh, we've been pummeled with uh, acronyms our whole life in education and all, so everything we do, we make jokes of ODM this, ODM that, sort of like the military. So anyway, uh, but seriously, on the serious side, uh, outdoor decision making, there's always two things that outdoors we want to look at. Uh, of course, number one is, is safety, uh, paramount safety. Is, is the outdoor activity that we're going to participate in is it going to be safe? You know, is it going to be safe? You know, I'm talking about safety as far as conditions, and of course, the weather and all, and uh, as far as the different uh, areas we're going to be in, is that all safe? And also, the safety factor of the, of the vessel we're in, or if the tree stand we're in, or any kind of apparatus that we're using, safety, safety, safety. That's just drilled in, and, uh, you know, from our parents from day one. So that's, that's paramount, of course, in, in the outdoor activities is safety. And of course, number two, uh, it, will it be enjoyable? It will be enjoyable considering the conditions that we're going to be exposed to. And that, it could be really, really cold in a hunting tree stand or, or like this past weekend now, uh, the weather. And here, here's what happened. It's an interesting story. I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, we, at 5 o'clock Sunday morning, we, we had a party, a group of guys. Uh, we, we were standing. Uh, we just got loaded up on the Seminole wind in St. Andrews getting ready for a big fishing trip. It was uh, a friend of mine from Quincy and his brother, and they were taking uh, his, his son, who uh, was living in Asheville, Tennessee, out. His son's getting married. This is a wedding present that he wanted from his dad was to take him fishing and, his, and a wedding party, fishing. I thought it really neat, so I was going along. I was going to fish with him, of course. I was going to film a show out of it and really been looking forward to it for quite some time. 
and his son came down from Tennessee, and a lot of folks from Tallahassee came over, so we had a you know good party. Then Captain Billy Archer came aboard, and, and uh, we looked at a radar, and we, we stood on the back of the boat, and uh, we, we talked about it. And Billy said, now, guys, you know, we, we can go out, but here, here's what it's going to be. He laid it on the table. In fact, you know, it's going to be it's going to be four to six. It's small craft warnings, and he said we'll catch some fish, but you're going to be you're not you're not going to really enjoy it. You're going and and I, I we knew what I'm talking about. Three or four of us on the boat had had been before, and and we know we'd been like this and up and down and just constantly pummel all day. And we made a decision right then, and I, of course I didn't make a decision. It was it was their trip, and I was just along, and I was willing to go. But they made a really wise decision. They they talked about it, and and uh, even though the wedding's coming up pretty soon. They decided to postpone that trip and everybody get together next year on June the 11th. In fact, we already uh, got together on it for June the 11th. But I thought, what a, you know, I, we're all a little disappointed, especially the young man, that, the uh, groom to be coming down from Nashville. You can just see the disappointment on his face. And it just it showed, it made me appreciate him even more, knowing the love and passion he had. I really want to get out and go fishing. But it was a wise decision, and I just wanted to pass this on to you. Uh, to make decisions like that, safety was not that important in that big of a boat, you know, because we, Billy's got a big old Miller, Miller Marine uh, built boat, and it's, it, you know, we would not have been unsafe, but we would have been, we would not enjoyed it. So that, that's what we based that decision on. I think it was a very good decision. In fact, Billy followed up later on about noontime, and he, he sent a picture in of where the area would go. We're going south, of course, off the Cape, and it was just lit up orange and yellow and all that. And I thought, man, that that just sort of cemented uh, what I was what I was thinking. And uh, ironically, we all, every one of us uh, that had talked to each other, we got home in time to go to church Sunday morning. We thought maybe the Lord was trying to tell us something. Billy said he got home to go to church, and he you know he hits about every day, so he was glad I think to get a day off. But we were glad to uh, to do that. So I just want to pass it on to you and make decisions. You know, even on a smaller scale, say. St. Joe Bay, if you were going scalloping and you looked at the weather, and that boat, it, uh, safety, of course, is important too. Also, the lightning and all. So, it, you know, that's another another situation or getting in tree stands and really, really cold weather. So, you know, on those on ODM, those two things, safety and, and re just being being able to enjoy it. So I just wanted to pass that on to you. And uh, and a a as you mature and as you spend more time in the outdoors, I think you know more and more what I'm talking about. Because those young guys, they're first impulse, let's go. Let's go. And but it, 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 uh, we we talked about it and uh, made some made some good decisions. So well, uh, pass that on to to your folks and all, and, and you do the same thing. Just make some good decisions on outdoors and uh, like I say, safety and, and enjoyability. Those two things on ODM. Now let's get a scallop. A lot of people I'm getting a lot of phone calls and uh, on scallops and all. I'm gonna do it on tomorrow's show. We're gonna really get in depth about the scallops and all. But I want to talk right now, and I show this video every year. It's on cleaning scallops. It's a little three-minute video. I know a lot of y'all have seen it. A lot of y'all know how to clean scallops. But every year we have new people coming in, and I get asked over and over again how to do this, how to do that. And I've, I've in my room upstairs. I've got a whole stack of uh, DVDs of how to this, how to how to do this, and uh, this is one on how to clean scallops. So uh, let's uh, we're going to roll this for three minutes. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about scallops. So Jeff, let's go and roll this one. Hi, right, folks. What we want to learn today is how to suck scallops. I know some of y'all know how to do it, but this is for you other folks who don't know quite how to do it. Real simple process. You know, scalloping is part of our heritage here in the Panhandle. It goes way back. I know when I do my book, I used to talk to some old timers who, who their wives sometimes would shuck during the season and all, and they would actually make enough money during scallop season to, to buy them a car, buy, buy the kids clothes, all kinds of stuff like that. So right now, we'll have no more commercial scalloping. Those days are over, and what we have now Basically, it's a collection, of, a real good collection of scallops each summer in St. Joe Bay. And I've been fortunate and blessed enough, this is going on almost 40 years I've been able to do this, and it's one of the most fun things we've ever done with our family and friends. And shucking, though, a lot of people dread shucking, but really, it's a relaxing and fun thing to do. A couple of basic things to remember. One of the things, you always want to have your shells open. Now, we went scalloping today, we clean most of our scallops on the boat, but I decided to bring back a few so we could film this little piece right here. You have, step number one, you have two sides of the scallop. You have a light colored side and a dark colored side. Now you always want a dark colored side up, okay? And then you have like, this is a little special, this is old butter knife we just curved a little bit and, and epoxy the handle. And you take that curved tip right there 
and you take it up and run along the top of the shell right there. You do it in one sweep, then you pop that dark color shell, toss it, and then you get all the guts. You usually get it all at one time, and most of the time they'll come right off in one clean pull. Toss them away, and then again with that curved knife, what you want to do is slice it right here. You don't leave any meat on the shell. That's what the old timer looked at. I want to know if you left any meat on the shell. Once you have that, just dump them off in there and just start it over. Again, you want, let's do it one more time. You want to pick it up. You have two sides, light colored shell, dark colored shell. Pop it open. It'll pop open easy now if they set out just a few minutes it'll always let them open up. Pop off that top one. Now you'll notice one of the things, they, have, they do have a lot of guts, a lot of eyes and all. One of the things is that muscle right there sitting on the, on the, on the side. They don't sit right in the middle. They sit on the side over there. So be aware of that. That's why you come in, always come in on, on your right side. And again, clean it off really good. And these are some big, big scallops. Uh, and, and you know, scallops, they, uh, a lot of the jury's still out on, on, on the research and all, but basically they used to think they lived for about 12 months, but now they're saying they live from 12 to 18. And, and I'm gonna give you an example. I, I, I believe they live from 12 to 18 months. And what I wanna show you, this is in one trip now. There's two different size scallops. This one has it, gotta be full grown, and this one almost, uh, I say, half grown right there. And that's, and that's uh, you can do that early part of the season, you, you can get them this size, or in the late part of the season, you can get them this size. So just remember, you have two sides, you have a light colored side and dark colored side, and you wanna come in on the top part, which is dark colored size. And I hope you now know how to suck the scallops. I'm Winston Chester of Pan Out Outdoors, helping you be a better outdoorsman. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you uh, learned how to do that. And just take your time doing it. You don't want to cut that meat off and just, you know, just get those guts out of the way. And uh, scallops are just really fine eating, especially when you just, you know, to get them out of the uh, bay that morning and eat them that afternoon. So hope you get an opportunity to do that. Now let's take a look at a fish and game forecast brought to us by Mark Coward. And Mark's number is 8326000. We're only looking at one time today, right smack dab in the middle of the day from 11 29 to 129 so that's a good time and uh and uh, it should be some some good weather like i say that tide remember early tide early high tide and then, then headed out so it's going tide's going to be moving uh i don't know if you have this right here this is interesting this is a reef fish survey and it, it is uh it, it, the thing about it the fwc the, i'm going to read this to you and I, I know we talked about it one time i forgot about it what is a guff fish uh, reef fish uh, survey, okay? Now this is mandatory for us, okay? It, anglers who recreational fish, including those 65 and older, from a private boat in the Gulf of Mexico waters off Florida and intend to harvest, okay? And then it lists red snapper, gag, amberjack, uh, rudderfish, jack, grouper, grouper, vermilion snapper, gray trigger fish. In fact, if you go any, any kind of fishing like that, the participation is mandatory as of April 1, 2015. So you can sign up at my FWC, but uh, I don't know if we get, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't done it. So, and I don't know if it's part of the uh, uh, deal. I know you don't have to do it on a party boat because you know that they can take the survey there. And I think the intent is, is uh, to, to make sure everybody's uh, catching, trying to keep a record of what private, the private folks are doing on their on their boat. And, but it's, this is mandatory. And I. I do not have one yet, so I've broken the law, and I admit it, and uh, I, I'm gonna try to get one, though. And it, uh, You know, FWC sometimes, I, I, they, they're, they're, the people that work for FWC, I just think the world of them, but sometimes in, in, out of Tallahassee, the communication and all, we just don't get uh, uh, really uh, uh, enough information, I think, uh, from them, and they, including on the scallops the last two years, they just sort of shut down and uh, redone and re, uh, uh, the information I get on, on what we're doing on scholars, but I did, I did scratch out the number. You know, I always had that chart. I'm gonna, tomorrow I'm gonna put that chart together for you. But I just, it's taking me hours to try to find what's what's going on. And uh, so the number of scallops on the scallop survey of St. Joe Bay for 20 for 2015, the number is 11, which is not a high number, and it is is uh, fascinating because it's sort of breaking that pattern. But you can't see the pattern broke because you, you have to have the whole chart. From from day from 1994 on when they started doing it, 
So uh, with that being said, now, the, the pictures I'm getting uh, and the reports I'm getting, I haven't gone yet. I'm definitely going this week uh, as soon as the weather breaks, and we, especially uh, as we get close to July 4th. We, we always try to go and, like I say, have a good good turnout for our fish fry on July 4th. So the the picture I'm getting, the people I've talked to, and uh, I appreciate all the feedback. I, I feel real, real uh, uh, I'm just honored that all of y'all will call me and tell me so we can pass it on. The f folks are finding some some okay and the ones they're finding interesting enough you know we always harping on these little ones they're finding these big ones which tells me one thing the ones they're finding are last year scallops i mean i've seen some pictures of big old healthy good looking scallops and and it's good that we're getting those now because they, they probably already spawn they probably did a late spawn and uh and they're going to uh, you know they're going to die on off uh, within the next month or so so i'm glad we're getting these because uh, uh they wouldn't be harvested I haven't seen a picture of a lot of little ones, and I, I've talked to a few people, and uh, and there, uh, one guy was telling me he went to the same spots he went last year. They found a lot of them last year, or they found enough to get a limit last year. And he said there just wasn't any on that area. So he moved around, moved around. He said he got some, but it didn't get a whole lot of them. So just be aware uh, of that and uh, and make sure uh, it don't, you don't go there with high anticipation or limiting out within 30 minutes like the old days because I don't think that's going to happen. Just sort of re, you know, re, rethink yourself as far as what you plan on doing. Are you going to get enough to eat that night, uh, you and your group of people on that boat? So that's, that's what I'm thinking. So uh, we're going to know more about it uh, tomorrow. I'm going to get more detail and all. But uh, it, the big thing is uh, just make sure you get out there. And, uh, and we're going to, uh, like I said, probably go Thursday or Friday. Anyway. Uh, about I got a couple more things. Oh, July one now. Uh, don't forget it. grouper season opening up here in our area. It's closing in the four counties in our eastern viewing area, including Franklin County. It's uh, wrap, wrapping up on gag grouper, but July one it's going to open up here in our area. So a lot of folks will be out grouper fishing. All right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed that little video. Hope you learned something on how to do it. Make sure now uh, do something outdoors. Uh, summer's here. Summer's almost halfway over. So uh, enjoy the great outdoors and do something good for your fellow man. You have a great day and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle On Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle On Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle On Tours.